I came to New York, I used to start out every day with Free For All uh, from that album. And that would start my day. Uh, and it would, I'd be in the shower. And dun, 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 dun. I would be just like, that would be pumped up, you know? And I just love the messengers. And you know, you read stories about, he would say, when these guys get too old, I'm gonna get some young ones. Okay, it's sort of like factual knowledge that, you know, you, if you're really studying the music, you read the liner notes in the back and about how he uh, saw a funeral and uh, on the side of the road and he stopped the car and said, if anybody else uh, has anything else to say, if anybody else doesn't have anything else to say, I'd like to say a few words about jazz. And you get these stories, you know, as you read on the back of the liner notes. And, and then in um, August of, of 1976, uh, I went to New York. Uh, because, um, shoot, uh, Jocko Pastorius, he was down there in Miami. I was in the University of Miami at that time. That's where I met Curtis Lundy and Carmen Lundy and uh, Jocko and Bruce Hornsby and these cats. We were all classmates. And so they all started migrating north. And so we're like, well, shoot, man. And we're hearing good reports. Jocko did this record, his first record with Herbie and Hubert Laws and all these cats. And we were like, oh my God, we must be part of something special. So we, we all went north, you know? And once I got there, I, uh, uh, I just started going out every night. I'd head to the village, and uh, my first night I sat in with Albert Daly and uh, Rufus Reed. It was his first night in town as well. That was like August uh, 24th, 1976. I, I remember certain dates. And uh, it was at a place called Folk City. And uh, Billy Hart was on drums sitting in. And uh, I remember uh, somebody was playing. And then when I started playing, Albert Daly came up from the basement. And he got on the piano and asked me what I wanted to play. And uh, so uh, we played, I don't know, I remember April or something. And the thing about New York, um, they're not going to come up and tell you, yeah, you sound good, you know? The question that they were asking me, which made me knew I was kind of in the ballpark, was, so who are you with? You know, because during that time, bands would come through New York and cats would branch out while they had a couple days in New York and, and sit in. So they assumed that I was with some, some band. I was like, well, I must be doing something right then, you know? And um, so this trend continued. You know, I, uh, I got married uh, to Pamela and uh, we both moved to New York, and uh, I was going out every night. It was my job. I felt that was my job. If I wanted to stay home and watch TV, I'd move to Jersey, you know? But if I'm in Manhattan, I got to go out every night, you know, because Manhattan is that type of place, you know? You just don't move to Manhattan and then just kick back with the remote, you know? You got I stopped watching TV for many years because everybody had a job on TV, and I was looking for my way. So this continued, and then one night, I really wasn't feeling up to it. I was a little bit catching a cold, but I went out that night anyway. And people had been telling me, you need to meet Boo, you need to meet the Boo, you know? He would, he would love to uh, meet you, you know? I, I know he'd like you like this. And still, you know, it hadn't sunk in that, that Art was this kind of really sincere talent scout. So anyway, yeah, yeah, and I met Curtis Fuller, and guys, you need to meet the Boo, you know? Boo would, Boo would love you. And uh, I'm like, okay. So I went out that night, not really feeling that well, and uh, I sat in with Curtis and uh, Jimmy Forrest and uh, Chris, uh, um, uh, Chris Woods, like this, B Butch Miles, and uh, one of my older friends I had met brought Art down into the club and sat him at the table and bought him some champagne. It was his birthday. And so I was like, oh, there he is, I'm playing. And uh, the guys are very gracious to me, by the way. Harold Mayburn, I think, was on piano. And they were very gracious. Go, blow, young man, blow, you know? And so next thing I know, the feeling of the drum changes, you know? Art goes up and grabs one stick, and he takes the ride cymbal, and, and Butch hands it over to him. And it's like, you, you, it's like you're driving down the road doing 70, and then a big semi comes and boom, gives you a boost behind from a high. I was like, boom, I was like, oh my God, what happened? And he's back there, what the fuck, blow, blow, you know? I'm like, oh my God, this guy's something else, man. And we finished the set, and he snatched me off the stage and took me into what I call the, uh, 
the jazz uh, office, which is the men's room. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and we, he said, who you with? There was that question again, who you with? He didn't say, dang, you sure sound good. He goes, who you with? I said, well, I'm with nobody. How would you like to be with the messengers? So I thought about it for about half a second. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, he said, we're leaving uh, for Japan, but I'll, get, I'll call you when I get back to the States. And I went over to his house. He gave me a big pile of records, told me to learn all the music. And he had a quintet at that time, so I added my part to all the music so that he wouldn't have to uh, uh, rehearse. I just stepped in and it became a sextet. And, um, you know, it, it came like that. You know, it happened a little later. Um, I was supposed to join in uh, October, no November, <clears throat> but the band broke up, come out of Japan. And, but Art, you know, he was true to his word with me. He was true to his word. Four years. It went by fast. It was like, you know, we were, I've never worked that hard in my life since. <clears throat> that was the hardest I'd ever worked, because, I mean, he just was, we would roll day in and day out. We'd drive cross country. If, if we drove, if we had a gig. Oh, I'm Bobby Watson, and I rock jazz. Check it out. <laughs> ¶¶